Hello Taurus, welcome back to the channel. Or if it's your first time here, welcome. Let's get straight into the Terrascope for Taurus. Wow, something, <clears throat> there's some change happening that may be, um, you know, pretty sudden or s pretty drastic with Taurus for you. But I'm showing that there may be some fear or resistance to that change. The first card that I'm getting out of the gate here is uh, Tower in Reverse. And Tower represents change that kind of comes out of nowhere, change that we may not see coming, and change that tears down old structures that have been ex in existence or things that we thought were permanent. You can see Tower here is like the castle. It's made of stone. It's very stable. It's very um, well established. But... And that represents the established norm, the way things have been, the way things are, you know, governments, um, solid relationships, solid foundations, all of that. Lightning's coming in and striking tower and causing it to catch fire and for everything to crumble. So I'm... Um, I'm getting the, th the image of Tower of Babel. You know, when you sometimes when you build too high, it crumbles down. So, and sometimes, you know, even things that look the most permanent can't be sustained over over long courses of time. Even ancient ruins, you know, we'll see that what was built a long time ago and was very structured and rigid in its time eventually eventually crumbles over the course of time. Um, in many cases. For these lightning bolts coming in, this is new divine information that is is affecting this tower and igniting it. So it's sudden change, stormy change, out in the middle of nowhere, unexpected, you know, can't don't always see this coming. In the reverse position, it shows that there may be some fear about that, some resistance about that, some delay, some in some ways the tower energy that is very much there, the change, the sudden dramatic change, forceful change is not being allowed to come through clearly and easily. That means that you might be resisting this or that you might, again, just have fears or doubts about it happening. So that is going to be my first message to you, Taurus, is embrace the change. Embrace the storm. Don't fight against it. Don't swim upstream. See if you can work on allowing whatever change comes out of left field um, because really it's breaking open to new structures. There is someone who is a um, earth sign involved with this, and this could very well be you, Taurus. This is the Queen of Coins, and Queen of Coins is a very um, Taurian sign, you know, archetype. It's She's down to earth, she's practical, she's good with money, she is like the person that you'd be expecting to cook a big meal for all the visitors who are visiting, and she takes care of the animals and the children and the whole... Um, homestead here. And she is looking away from this tower. She is kind of trying to avoid it. And it's also in reverse. So this tells me if there's like this big explosion that happens, mama ain't trying to hear it. <laughs> or, you know, she's just trying to look the other way and pretend that that's not happening over here in the background. So again, I'm, I'm seeing if this is not you, this could also be a Virgo or Capricorn, but I'm kind of getting the sense that this might be you, Taurus. So if you are normally in a position of authority and you're trying to hold down the fort, you're trying to be practical, down to earth, trustworthy, all of that, you know, try to just glimpse over your shoulder once in a while to, to look at this tower and realize that it's not necessarily always a bad thing. It may look like a bad thing, but try to get over fears regarding it or um, just glimpse over your shoulder and take it in whatever doses you can handle it because it's actually breaking open your world and um, tower is not, not necessarily always a thing to be feared. Again, whenever you roll with the storm, instead of trying to fight against it, you're stronger on the other side of it to continue with your life. So rely on your own practical, grounded self. That's The earth energy is coming through in the upright position here, and this is the person who maintains her cool. She's practical. She's uh, trustworthy. She's grounded. That's a really good word here. 
stay in that. Be be queen of coins. Because she, she can sort of like breathe through whatever is coming at her. It also looks like eight of wands in reverse. Eight of wands means that um, things are happening quickly. Things are flying through the air. The information is almost lined up. Um, it's approaching quickly. This is sort of like the feeling of... Uh, pot of water that is just about ready to boil and it's you know the last 10 percent last 10 or 20 percent needs to happen or the last piece of information needs to come in that's what eight of wands means things happening quickly thing information coming in things lining up wands flying through the air information being conveyed in the reverse position this is like a, a resistance to that information being conveyed you there may be some last piece of the puzzle it's coming at you and you're trying to resist it. It's like, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. I know this stuff is coming at me. I know the times they are changing, but I don't want I don't want this to end. Or I don't want that that pot of water to boil. So it's it's almost like a denying or or resisting of the information that is coming at you. I'm going to encourage you, Taurus, if that's the case, try to be open to it. Try to roll with it. Try to Look at how it might be beneficial to acknowledge what's happening. Um, that's it, it could either be that stuff is happening. When we have Eight of Wands in reverse, it could be stuff that's happening too fast for you, or it's too slow, it's in delay. It's not happening, you know, at the right time coming for you quickly. It's, it's like there's a resistance to things happening quickly. There's a resistance to receiving that last piece of information. So I kind of see that there's a storm happening around Taurus here. You know, and keep in mind too, this is the dark night of the storm. This is like the clear day afterwards. So you're kind of trying to keep, keep your cool in between. And the more you can focus on allowing things to happen that are happening, it's, it's going to benefit you. It's going to be easier to retain your calm, composed, grounded center, Taurus. Because guess what? After that new, after all that, just like when it rains, it's actually really funny pictorially with the with the images of the weather here. Because if you look at the progression of the weather in these three cards that are surrounding Tor, what, who I'll call Taurus, we've got the storm that happens that you really don't want to happen in reverse. We've got the new information coming in, uh, the the thing almost being complete it's 80 to 90 percent lined up and it's a clear day in the background like when after it rains we see these big cumulus clouds that's being semi-resisted but you know here here it is it's the, the blue day and then here is um ace of cups my cup runneth over this is like you know when the new day arrives after it's rained and stormed it's given all this life to this new flowers um hearts energy cups represent heart or emotion so it's like having your heart filled it's the dove of peace arrives so this is ace of cups which means a new beginning of the heart and as you can see it kind of means joy compassion love a new passion perhaps it's that same echoing of the new moon in scorpio energy that we've seen um, Newman Scorpio is new passions, new desires. Aces are always new beginnings. Heart cups energy represents heart, which has to do with emotions and desires. So you're really busting forth into new, new desire, new passion. And for Taurus, this is regarding your relationships because Taurus, you know, that new moon in Scorpio just happened in our, in your, um, seventh house house of partnerships so there may be a new blooming in your relationships or want a desire for peace a desire for passion a desire for joy compassion you know the lotus represents enlightenment and compassion in in the buddhist tradition so this is all a new desire new passion in regards to relationships so enjoy that taurus you might have to get through a little bit of a storm here to get through that but don't resist it don't resist it there's good stuff here for you on the other side it says, too, you know, you may have to become like a child again, Taurus, in order to get there. You may have to drop feeling like the expert or the queen. You know, if I look at who these two people are, I'll actually put them like this um, because he follows her. 
is this person's the person who's the expert. She knows a lot. She's been through a lot. She's that's what gives her her experience and her wisdom and her knowledge, her composure. This one, the page is the younger version of this person. So this could be male or female, but I look at it as like the younger version. This is who this person used to be, had to graduate through to become. This is the apprentice, the person who's studying and learning about coin energy for the first time. So Paige is open and willing, willing to be the novice, willing to be the beginner, willing and enthusiastic and is like, sign me up. I want to soak up everything that I can. I want to learn. Um, and it could be related to money. It could be related to values. It could be related to lifestyle. But there is some resistance on your part, Taurus, of being the novice again, being the person who doesn't have the experience. This may mean that you're not willing to go into an area as a non-expert, as the non-authority. This person doesn't have the authority. This is like the newbie on the block. This is the rookie is a good word for this. But what I'm seeing is that in order to, in order to do, to achieve the world card, that's in reverse too. In order to get to this, which is showing up for you here in the middle of the month, you have to be willing to be the rookie. Be the young part of yourself. Be the young earth sign that you used to be. Be willing to sign up as the novice and be, you know, take on the role of the enthusiastic, willing, optimistic parts of Paige because that's really leading you to world. And world means feeling free, feeling supported, feeling like your complete self that's getting support from the, the entire celestial sphere. I mean, we've got Leo the lion representing the fire energy and energy of, you know, cour courageousness. Taurus here is you representing the phys physical element, physicality. Scorpio is represented by uh, the eagle, which represents transformation and is the water element. And then we have um, Aquarius here, which is represented by the person, represents air or the mind element. So it's like you're supported in all realms when a world shows up. It's one of the best cards in the deck. It re represents integration, freedom, victory, success, just completion of self, complete self. By blocking your willingness or optimism... You're blocking this, your access to this. Those are in reverse together. So as you become more open, as you become more enthusiastic, more willing, I'm even getting a sense of more vulnerable, more willing to be recognized or seen as the novice again, restarting, rebuilding, um, re going back to a younger version of yourself or a less experienced version of yourself, you reawaken this world. That's what allows you to get there. So consider that, Taurus. Um, don't be afraid to be like the young apprentice again. Because guess what else it leads you to? Intimacy. Remember what I said about vulnerability? That's what this lover's card is about. This is intimacy through vulnerability. You can see in this card, both of these people are naked. So they're being completely open with one another, completely connected. There's, there's mature intimacy here going on. And it's love, it's compassion, it's care, it's, you know, it's lovers. It's as close as you can get with another human. And it's because you've been able to be vulnerable, be free, be open, be willing. That's, there's, it might be hard for you and you might have resistance against that that's what the cards in reverse are telling me but if you can access it this is there for you on the other side um this could be that new passion that's showing up for you it could it could either be the beginning of a new relationship because you're open to it and allowing yourself it for it or it could be a new passion within your current relationship that by being this young person becoming free again this comes about so Taurus there's some nice stuff for you here especially mid-month um once you push through this and if you're able to allow that younger side of yourself to come through. I mean, alternately, this could be another earth sign. This could be Virgo or Capricorn, you know, maybe a child of yours that you're having a hard time with and it's 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 cramping in on your freedom, on, on you feeling like you get to be your full self. Like, this is the queen. And it could be that this is her in reverse because of interaction with this younger earth sign person, tension, friction. But... I'm really getting the first interpretation more for you, Taurus, that this is the younger side of yourself. It could really go different ways for different 
different Torians out there, but those, that's what's showing up. And then two, I get, this is two of wands um, in reverse. Two of wands has to do with personal power, courage, boldness. It's about a spiritual journey. In the card, it's, it's like having the world in the palm of your hands, feeling like the world is yours. It's like the world is my oyster. Um, and you do get help with this. This is your, I call it the Sherpa. But this is like when, when you're going on a uh, mountain, you know, mountain climbing, hiking Mount Everest or something. This is the person who carries stuff with you while you do your conquest, your travel, your exploration. I actually call it spiritual journey because it's, to me, this two two of wands is a spiritual card, you know, integrating self and other, working with someone else to achieve something, all the plans and actions and, you know, fire represents activity and action. When this is in reverse, it kind of feels like the gears are grinding or that maybe you're not, not working well with an employee or not working, you know, you're, you're subsuming your own confidence and boldness and power. It could be within this relationship that you're feeling like you're giving it up, um, your own confidence, boldness, personal power, all of that because of this. But it could just be that for whatever reason, you know, you are dampening yourself or you're feeling a little less than, not feeling so bold, not feeling so confident, um, not accepting help could possibly be it while, you know, while there's another person wanting to help you. It could be like resistance to that help or resistance to feeling like you can go out and do things. I'm not sure how it's going to show up for you, Taurus, but there, there's, there it is. Um, and then, interestingly, you do receive help. These, these cards are both kind of interesting together. Um, this card is a card of recovery, Six of Swords. It has to do with going from stormy seas, hello tower, um, to calmer horizons. And it shows someone who's receiving help from someone else. Now, whether this is you helping someone, Taurus, or someone helping you, or you helping yourself, those are all possibilities. But interesting... I'll put it like this, interesting transition from two energy, two, two people, one here to help the other one, but not in focus, they're helping this person, maybe being resistant to it, to becoming open to help and, and achieving recovery through it. Healing is another great um, translation for Six of Swords. It can sometimes, I've even heard it be called science. So it's healing, it's recovery, it's the application of knowledge and wisdom to take yourself from a, a troubled situation to a calmer one. And, you know, that can often mean receiving help. So it looks like if you are resistant to receiving help, to going on this journey, by the time the later part of November rolls around, you may be more open to that. And, you know, here's, here's, this is a real channel of vulnerability, you know, no, being, working with the effect of your world being turned upside down, maybe being more vulnerable or accepting that you're a rookie or a novice, you know, things are new, feel new again, that you don't necessarily have all the experience um, in this new situation. And maybe you are open to some help. So that's all, those are all possibilities going on there. I also see a air sign, two air signs in reverse, um, both knight and queen of swords. So either of these cards could be directly air signs. So this could be Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. And they're both in reverse. So they're not seeing things in the same way that you are, Taurus. Um, these people are, are, because they're air signs, they have to do with the mental element, um, mind people, in terms of thoughts, communication, ideas, knowledge, truth, wisdom. That's all air sign stuff. It's very, it's very mental energy. And normally, both knight and queen of swords are advocates of the truth. And they'll be very, they can be very blunt. They can be very direct. It's actually both a strength and a liability in terms of they'll be very clear about what they think. <laughs> However, in the reverse position, it's not necessarily in alignment with what you think, Taurus, and it's not necessarily to your benefit. So there could be a person who's in an authority position who is 
saying things that are very curt to you, or if this is you, that you're interpreting you as both of these queens, you know, this could be you not in your own truth, not feeling like you have the right to say what you want to say or defend your truth, because that's what Queen of Swords does. Or these could be other people. I mean, again, this could be a Gemini man, a Libra man, Aquarius man. They're, they're, they're kind of on both sides of this Four of Cups. So it tells me that there may be some disagreement regarding Four of Cups issues. Now, Four of Cups has to do with someone checking out, emotionally especially. Cups represent the heart and emotion. And Three of Cups says, or rather Four of Cups says, these three cups are always here. They're always the same. They'll always be the same. I'm bored. I don't care. I checked out. I'm just, I'm just looking at my... I'm just like navel gazing. I'm, I actually call this a Rip Van Winkle card because he just like kind of looks, kind of falls half asleep and he's kind of unaware of what's going on around him. He's just focused on the three cups like, is this all there is? Whereas the universe is trying to hand this person another piece of heart, another more emotional life, more, it's this, it's this cup. I mean, look at these cards. They're almost... This is what's being depicted here. I'm handing you the cup runneth over. Peace, joy, new passion, new love, new creativity, all of that. But the four of cups person doesn't see that because they're too preoccupied with what's going on in, in you know, 